to begin with, choose a comfortable sitting position. For some of you, that might mean that you are sitting on a block already or are supporting your back against the wall. If you are doing that, I want you to give yourself some time before you go back against the wall. We will be doing a seated side bend, just not quite yet. There are some things for the shoulders and the neck I would like to do before we start moving into stretching so that the stretch is effective. In your cross-legged position, bring the hands to rest down onto your knees and then close your eyes. Start to focus on a very focused quality of breath. So aiming for an inhale for roughly a count of five and an exhale for a count of six. And if you are newer, or perhaps you just need the reminder, your aim is to work with this format of breath throughout the class, using it to get steady, especially in really flighty moments. And that could be poses that are really challenging you, or when your energy starts to get really low, or maybe when you're in a place of not quite knowing what to do. One of the things you definitely can do and know how to do is deep breathing and it works wonders. Take your hands and put them towards the side of your ribs. So you can either do hands on the side of the ribs or fold the arms. Apply a little bit of pressure with the hands. Do your inhale in a way that presses the ribs outwards into your hands. So it's three breaths into the side ribs. And aiming primarily just now to connect to a sense of space around the rib cage and around the heart. After you've done the three breaths with side ribs, bring the hands onto the front ribs, so breastbone area. Aim to breathe in a way that sends the chest forwards, but without pushing your chest forwards physically or exaggerating it. If you hold some tension in your abdomen during the inhalation, you're more likely to create this thoracic opening. Then after those three breaths, take the hands to the back of the heart. So you get two choices here. You can either bring one hand around the back and the other hand up over between your shoulder blades. You can take both hands back there so your fingers are there, or one in front and one at the back. So see what feels like a better point of action for you. Take a deep breath in to move the back ribs. Again, some rigidity in the abdomen during the inhalation will really help. Then release the hands down, close your eyes, and aim to move the breath incredibly three-dimensionally into the back ribs, the side ribs, and the front ribs. So you're getting this multi-directional expansion. The inhale has to be very thorough for that to be accomplished, so bring that in. Commit to that. All right, now, before we move into side bends and stretches, I'm interested in you getting different muscles switching on. So instead of really big passive poses where we're sort of waiting for things to change, I want you to be more involved in that process. And this is one of the things that really spoke to me when I started forest yoga was, instead of just doing the same thing over and over again or being in a pose and waiting, you're actively doing things. There's something to be done. And if you're bored, you're probably not doing the things that you could be doing, whether it's telescoping the ribs, expanding your breath, wrapping the shoulders. So this first drill, I want you to set your feet so they are in front of you. Take your hands so they are behind you. Wrist sensitive, simply turn your hands outwards. 
This doesn't need to become a wrist thing yet. Take a deep breath in. Exhale without bending your arms. Let your shoulders pitch forwards. Move your back back and let your head come forward. So you're creating a bend into the upper back. Inhale, lift the breastbone forwards and up and lift the head up. Exhale, soften it down between the shoulders. Let your shoulder heads right up and let the head come forwards. Inhale, pull with the arms so the chest lifts up. Exhale, round into the back. Let the head get into this. So for tight trapezius and neck, this is a useful one. Inhale, lift up, chest is going forwards, lifting the head. Exhale, round into the upper back, so you're allowing the shoulders to roll forwards. Inhale, lift. One more like that. Exhale, round into the back. Inhale, lift. Come back towards your seated position. So using that just to create a little bit of this forward and back action through the shoulders. Take your arms out to the side. Obviously, take care of if anybody's on the mat with you or you're next to a wall. You will need that space later too. Turn your left palm up and your right palm down. So at the minute, the rotation hasn't done much. Rotate the arms further so you're seeing if you can turn that left palm back, the right palm to face up, but reach out with the arms. So one shoulder is coming forwards, one shoulder is going back. Inhale, bring the hands back through center. Exhale, turn the right palm up, the left palm down, reach out with the arms. Inhale, arms back through center, palms face forwards. Exhale, left palm up, right palm down, reach outwards with your arms. Inhale, arms through center. Exhale, rotate right palm up, left palm down. Inhale through center. Make tight fists with your hands, but straighten the arms. Deep breath in. Exhale, left palm up, right palm down. Inhale through center. Exhale, right palm up, left palm down. If you've got them the other way around, you'll be fine. Inhale, come through center, as long as you keep changing. Exhale, left arm up, right arm down. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, right arm up, left arm is rolling down. Inhale to release that. Either be cross-legged, left leg in front to the right as we move into seated side bend. More flexible day, bring the left shin atop the right for shoelace. If you're using a block for shoelace, you can always set your foot in front of the shin so it's actually on the block, heel in line with the knee. So you're still creating the exact same shape of hip opening for this left leg but without the pressure on the right leg. So just see what feels relevant for now. Bring your right elbow up, right elbow in line with shoulder. We're jumping to stage three of unlocking the shoulders so we can get that tactile sensation. Bring the left palm to the inside of the elbow. So this is this piece that I like about forest yoga. You can feel this doing what it needs to do exactly from the first moment. Deep breath in. Exhale, push your elbow into your hand, push your hand into your elbow. So your aim is to feel chest muscles engaging and underarm muscles engaging. Inhale, lift chest. Exhale, draw your right shoulder blade back and shoulder blade down, maintaining the pressure. Inhale, reach the elbow forwards. Now look at your forearm, get it straight up and down, and then rotate it out to the side without leaning to the side. If you're leaning to the side, you're kind of cheating it a wee bit. So this is an action of rotation. So when we say wrap your shoulder, it's this deal. Inhale, relax the arm. Now to translate that, reach the same arm, right palm faces forwards. Exhale, turn the right palm towards the left side of the room so you feel that it is your shoulder blade the muscles here working and the muscles in at the chest working maybe less than they were with the bent arm. Take the left hand out to the left. Inhale, lift right ribs. Exhale, lean to your left and soften left ear towards left shoulder. Inhale, lift right ribs up. Exhale, draw shoulder blades down, neck relaxing. So in forest yoga, we tend to work poses with a relaxed neck. It doesn't mean dropping your head completely, but more dealing with any residual tension or unnecessary tension in the neck. Stage two, exhale, reach your right hand to the right and bring the hand down so it is lower than the right shoulder. Actively reach with the right arm, shoulder blades down. Feel where is the best place to get a stretch in the neck, maybe tucking the chin down, maybe angling the chin upwards, but feeling where it needs it. If you don't need support for your back, left hand can come up onto that right side of neck. 
and either hooking onto the trapezius, so the back of your shoulder and drawing down towards the shoulder blade, or if you're leaning the chin upwards, you can draw down on some of those muscles that are going from the back of your head all the way down towards the first and second rib. So some of these structural cords that pull the head forwards. If you're doing the front of the neck, notice if deep breathing is still a thing, probably not. Bring it back. Now coming up, take the left hand onto the side of your head, lift your head up so you're not straining stretched neck muscles. Change the cross in your legs. So either shoelace, right shin on top of left, maybe putting the foot onto a block. Otherwise cross-legged or any other hip um, opener would work, so maybe Baddha Konasana or knee pile. Take the right hand out to the right, about a foot and a half. Oh, no, brain, go back. <laughs> Unlocking the shoulders first, get the left elbow in line with your shoulder. Take the right palm to the inside of the left elbow. Inhale, lift ribs up. Exhale, draw that left shoulder blade back, shoulder blade down. Inhale, reach the elbow forwards and then begin to increase the amount that you're squeezing in so you feel the chest muscles engaging. Look at your forearm, straighten the forearm up so it's perpendicular to the floor hand active. Deep breath in. Exhale, consider rotating the arm out more, so aiming to get the hand to move out but without just arbitrarily moving your wrist. Inhale, relax the arm. Now take that arm up. So your aim is to feel, can you create that wrapped shoulder blade so your elbow goes from facing the side of the room towards the front of the room and up. Side bend. Exhale, flatten the right palm, lean to the right. Inhale, lift left side, low ribs up. Exhale, wrap left shoulder blade towards the underarm so the palm faces down and reach out so you feel a sense of space coming into the left side of your ribs, left side of lower back. Do your breathing in a thorough way that helps you feel a sense of opening around the left side of your chest. Stage two, exhale, reach that left hand to the left and down so it is lower than the shoulder. Reach actively with it. If you don't need the right hand for too much support, you can bring that hand up and start to work some hands-on assists into your practice, seeing as it's been months of hands-on assist starvation. Um, if you haven't been to the studio, we use sort of hands-on adjustment to help work with tight areas and help people with poses, but now you can learn to do them yourself you're probably missing them. So if you're working into the back of the shoulder, I find head tucking down a better working position. Alternatively, chin going upwards, working into the front of the neck. So not your throat. If you're stroking your throat, that's just going to be odd. Maybe it feels lovely. You know, who's to judge? Now working with your neck relaxed, inhale to reach with that left arm. Use the right hand on the side of your head and lift your head up. Take the legs out there, give them a wee bit of movement, so a little bit of a rocking side to side. If you've done the 90 degree hip mobility work before, just a little bit of that, just to kind of scrub the hips if you're not used to sitting at the start of your practice. So especially if you've been sitting a lot today, sitting suddenly just feels like betrayal when you sit on your yoga mat. Sit with the left leg crossed in front of the right. If you had your back against the wall, come away from the wall for this. You're moving into cross-legged spinal twist or half lotus spinal twist. If you're doing lotus, left foot is coming up, ideally so the toes are kind of hanging off over the edge of that leg. Some schools teach like the heel bone to pubic bone and all this does is create a rather catastrophic opening in the ankle plus extra rotation in the knee. If you move it over so it's in line with the hip bone, there's no torque on the ankle and I prefer to see this if you're looking to stabilize this joint. Um, I don't think this is a joint you need to open too much, you know, if you enjoy walking. Cross your arms on your chest. Take a deep breath in, lift your chest up, anchor down through sit bones. Exhale, turn your chest left. So you're seeing without the use of your arms, how much your muscles can take you around. Inhale, bring yourself back. Exhale, rotate left. So belly muscles are pulling in as you turn, 
chin is in line with chest. Inhale, chest back through centre. So it might not be very far. Exhale, rotate left. Now pause here. Take the right hand to the outside of the left knee. Take the left hand either onto the floor behind you, onto your lower back, or bring it around to hold the right foot. Now this might be one of those moments where if you've got a strap or a pair of tights, you can hook it around your foot, around the right side of your lower back to hold the strap so that you can pull with the left arm. If your arm is behind your back but the shoulders just kind of hang in there limp because you can't pull, then the arm isn't doing anything. You'd probably get more out of having the foot on the that hand uh, on the floor behind you instead. Stay here. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Slowly inhale, lift the rib cage up away from the ground. Exhale, pull belly muscles in. Inhale, come back through center, change the cross new legs. That might be half lotus. Similarly, it might not be. So maybe cross legged. Fold the arms on your chest. Maybe you folding them the other way to the way that you always fold them. <laughs> do you sleep like this? I do. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, turn the chest to the right. So feeling, can you rotate without letting your right hip go back? Inhale, chest back through center, chest up. Exhale, rotate to the right. Inhale, ribs come back through center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, back through center. This time, take that twist, but stay in it a wee bit longer. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release left hand outside the right knee, elbow bent. Right hand is behind you, either on the floor, on the fingertips, or palm on your lower back to help you create this lifting up sensation. Or perhaps that hand is holding the foot or a well-placed strap. Inhale, lift the ribcage up away from the ground. Exhale, use both arms to help turn your chest to the right. So you're feeling, can you still recruit those muscles to create the engagement rather than just mechanically using your arms to force yourself around the corner? So if you are rating flexibility as the thing that makes your yoga practice advanced, is it? Is it something other than that? I would say control, uh, being able to move in a way that is deliberate is a little bit superior to being able to flop in and out of poses. Inhale, bring yourself back through center. Unravel your legs. Before you come down for abdominals, doing a little bit of work with the arms. Now, if you've got a block, you can use it between your hands. If you don't have a block, but you've got a roll, then you can use that. Just make sure if you haven't taped it up, that it doesn't disintegrate. I want you to watch me first. So it's a variation on dolphin prelude. So starts elbows under shoulders, Elbows then move forwards and I have the block up before I lower my chest. Then maintaining this bend in the arms and lowering the chest down, head is coming down. So I'm getting a tricep chest and sort of chest shoulder stretch versus if my arms are here, it just kind of flops down, but I'm not getting the tricep length. I want you to get that before we go in. If you do not have a block and your roll is not necessarily fit for purpose, you're gonna do three breaths holding one arm up and then three breaths holding the other arm up. Okay, come down onto your elbows. So you're going for pelvis above the knees, elbows under the shoulders. Take the elbows forwards about six inches. If you're using the block, have it on the wide setting between your palms and then lift that up and just pop the skin up from the elbows. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, begin to move your chest downwards, tuck your chin so you can dodge headbutting the block and bring the hands so they feel like they are straight up towards the ceiling. Endeavouring for underarms to be going down towards the ground. It is your preference, whether it's the head that's down or the chin that's down. Very slightly stick your butt out here. Now, even though the front ribs and side ribs feel really tight, come back to that expansive breath, creating space around the rib cage, wherever you can get. If you were doing one arm at a time, switch to the other arm. Inhale, 
Inhale to release the arms down. Bring yourself back out to there. Be in either a seated or a kneeling position. Kneeling is simply for the sake of variety for now. And that could be sitting on a block or the roll if you've got that. We're playing a game. Put your hands on your ribs. That wasn't the game. Pull your low ribs in. So you're thinking abdominal engagement. Lift the head up so you feel like you're in a pretty good straight line. Take your left arm up and your right arm down. Turn the left palm back, turn the right palm back. Without moving your ribs, exhale, reach the arms back. So this game is called Don't Touch Your Head, Don't Touch Your Back, Don't Move Your Head, Don't Move Your Back. It is a family favorite at Shea Heart Space. Deep breath in, exhale, bend the arms, moving the hands towards each other, but don't touch your head, don't touch your back, don't move your head, don't move your back. Inhale, bring the arms out to the side and take the right arm up, left arm down. Turn that palm inwards so you're outwardly rotating the arm, but the palm's changing to face inwards and reach the arms back. Take a deep breath in, head up. Exhale, bend the arms towards each other so the elbow isn't going out to the side, that right elbow. It stays up, but it moves back, but you are not touching your back. Inhale, bring the arms out to the side. Exhale, left arm up, right arm down, move the hands towards each other. I just noticed somebody leave the class. <laughs> Inhale, bring your arms around. Exhale, reach right arm up, left arm down. They can't handle. Don't touch your head, don't touch your back. Inhale, bring the arms around. Okay, relax the shattered remnants of your arms and your shoulders. You're coming down for abdominals. So think, why am I getting you to do shoulder stuff during the abdominals? It is because when I see people doing abdominals, frequently I'm greeted with shoulder blades that are kind of here, when the shoulder blades are kind of wedged together, I want to be able to see that the shoulder blades are spreading on the back and wrapping forward. So you're not on the bottom tip of the shoulder blade because actually it's over here rather than all the way back here and resting the weight on them. And it's really easy when you first start out to feel like you're just clunking between these two. I want to see that you are getting that wrapped shoulder is a massive postural change when you're laying on your back, it will transform the way that you do abdominals, I certainly hope. So for the abdominals, things that you need, you need to have the block, and that's pretty much it. If you are back sensitive and you want to do these with the feet against the wall, do that when we get to the second abdominal, which I won't tell you what it is yet, but just make sure you've got that kind of in your plan. Come down onto your back, this moving this sound so I can still speak to y'all. Okay, so beginning with elbow to knee with back traction, bring the knees up so your knees are above your hips. Interlace your fingers behind your head and bring the elbows in close to the sides of your head. Lift your head and shoulders up. Now in this position, lean your head back, but reach the upper arms up towards the ceiling. So you create this spread in the back, but you're also not on your shoulder blades, you're slightly lifted. Instead of pushing your low spine down, press your pelvis down, pull the low ribs in, like we were doing in don't touch your head, don't touch your back, and you should be already feeling the abdominals engaging. Take a deep breath in, hold the breath, slowly curl the tailbone up without swinging the legs. Exhale, reach elbows left, send your right leg straight up and flex the foot. Get off that left shoulder blade by wrapping your shoulder blades forwards. Inhale, bend the leg. So that isn't the back traction. We'll get to that. Hold the breath, tailbone up. Exhale, reach elbows to right leg. Left leg goes up, pull belly down. Inhale, bend leg, shoulders to center. Hold your breath in, curl tailbone up. Exhale, reach elbows left, right heel drives up, pull belly down. Inhale, bend legs, knees above hips. Hold your breath in, curl tailbone up. Exhale, elbows to right leg, left heel goes up. So flex that foot, pull the toes towards your shin, belly down. Inhale, bend legs, hold your breath, tailbone up. Exhale, elbows to left leg, right leg goes up, now pause. Put your right hand where your thigh meets your pelvis. Push your hand into your thigh, pull the thigh up, push your thigh against your hand, pull belly down. Inhale, bend legs, so that is the back traction part. Hold the breath. Tailbone up. Exhale, reach elbows to right leg. Left leg goes up. Left hand on left thigh. Push hand into thigh. Thigh into hand. Tractioning that thigh bone out. 
belly down. Inhale, bend legs. Hold your breath. Tailbone up. Exhale, reach elbows left. Right leg goes up. Push your right hand onto your thigh, your thigh onto your hand. Pull belly down. Inhale, bend legs. Hold the breath. Should be getting intense. Curl tailbone up. Exhale, reach elbows to the right. Left leg goes up. Push your left hand against your thigh. Push your thigh against your hand. Pull belly down. Inhale, bend legs. The count is high today. Hold the breath. Tailbone up. Exhale, reach elbows left. Right leg goes up. Now pause. Put your left hand against your left knee. Push your hand against your knee. Push your knee against your hand. Drive the heel up. Curl tailbone up. Belly down. Inhale, bend legs. That was ghastly. Hold the breath. Tailbone up. Exhale, elbows to right leg. Left leg goes up. Put your right hand just above the knee. Push your hand against your right thigh. Push your right thigh against your hand. Curl tailbone up more. Belly down. Inhale, bend legs. Head down. Feet down. Oh, my goodness. I hope you're swearing at your screen or something. Something emotive. All right, now that's not all the abdominals. Twisted root abdominals. So my hip injured, groin strained, low back freaky people, I recommend you do this with your feet against the wall, or at least one foot. Everyone else, bring your knees up, but get the knees so they're more above your belly button. Cross your left thigh over your right thigh and move the left foot closer to the right leg bone. So it's not just an arbitrary cross. Your aim is that you're rolling those thighs in. Now maybe the left foot snuggles behind the right calf. So notice I lifted the right leg up and over to create that rather than trying to thrash the left foot under there. Inhale, lift the head and shoulders up. Exhale, curl tailbone up. Squeeze sit bone muscles. Squeeze thighs. Reach kneecaps up. Pull belly down. Inhale, uncurl tailbone. The head and shoulders are up. Shoulder blades up. Exhale, curl, tailbone up, squeeze sit bones, squeeze thighs, reach knees up, turn thighs inwards, belly down. Inhale, relax the tuck and tailbone, last one. Exhale, curl, tailbone up, squeeze sit bones, squeeze thighs, reach knees up, belly down. Inhale, head down, unravel your legs. Ooh, that actually got really, really tough. Cross your right leg over your left, so especially this is my second time doing these today, this is fun. Clasp your hands behind your head. Right leg is crossed over left this time, either working with your right foot moving towards your left foot or hook that left leg over the right. Inhale, lift head and shoulders up, press pelvis down. Exhale, curl, tailbone up, squeeze sit bones, squeeze thighs, reach knees up, belly down. Inhale, relax the tuck in the tailbone, press down through your pelvis. Exhale, curl, tailbone up, squeeze sit bones, squeeze thighs, reach knees up, lift head and shoulders up, belly down. Inhale, relax the tuck in the tailbone, press pelvis down. Exhale, curl, tailbone up, squeeze sit bones, squeeze thighs, reach knees up, pull belly down. Inhale, head down, set your feet down. Oh, so abdominals should be feeling pretty sparkly by now. Grab your roll or your block, put it to your inner thighs. If you're using the block, have it on the medium setting and then pretty close to your pelvis. Well, as close as you can get it to your pelvis. Bring your knees up. So you can do this when legs bent, especially if you tighten the hamstrings or hip flexors, or alternatively, work with your legs straight. Interlace your fingers behind your head and neck for three part twisting abdominals with the roll, the gift that keeps on giving. Inhale, head and shoulders lift. Hold the breath, squeeze that block. Exhale, tailbone up, reach elbows towards your left leg, belly down. Inhale, head and shoulders come to center. Hold the breath, squeeze the block. Exhale, tailbone up, reach elbows towards your right leg, pull belly down. Inhale, head and shoulders to center. Hold the breath, squeeze block. Exhale, tailbone up, reach elbows straight up towards the ceiling, pull belly down. Inhale, head down, resting, exhale. Don't rest too much though. Inhale, lift head and shoulders up, for here we go again. Hold the breath, squeeze the block. Exhale, tailbone up, reach elbows towards your left leg. Curl tailbone a second time, squeeze block a bit more, belly down. 
Inhale, shoulders to center. Hold the breath. Squeeze the block. Exhale, tailbone up. Reach elbows towards your right leg. Squeeze the block a second time. Belly down. Inhale, shoulders to center. Hold your breath. Curl, tailbone up. Squeeze block. Exhale, head and shoulders lift. Curl, tailbone a second time. Squeeze the block a bit more. Pull belly down. Inhale, head down. Set your feet down. Moving into bridge. Have the heels so they're underneath the knees. Bring your shoulders down away from your ears, palms face up. Take a huge breath in, feeling where the breath can now move to around the chest. Exhale, press into active feet, curl tailbone up and lift pelvis. Roll or block is staying at the inner thighs, so you have something that you can squeeze against. Shoulder tight, see if taking the arms overhead, elbows wider than shoulders, see if that gives you different access to the regions from your shoulder blades up towards your neck. So if those areas feel tight, I sometimes find arms overhead feels like a good place to work with that. Take a deep breath that moves the abdomen. So you've done a lot of work so far to really get all this stuff moving around. Exhale to pull the belly muscles in a little with an extra wee bit of tuck in the tailbone. So aiming to almost send your knees towards the front of the mat and your sit bones towards your knees. Take another deep breath. Exhale, lower down through your shoulders, mid back, low back, and then set pelvis down. Remove the roll or the block, set it to the left, roll to your right, oh, or come up from your left. Come up from the ground either way. Okay, you're moving into turbo dog. Well, mm, here's the deal. If turbo dog is tough, the part two of it is going to feel very, very tough. So we're gonna break this into three stages. Turbo puppy, which is stage one, very easy, very well, very, it's doable, very big sensations. Stage two is turbo dog, stage three is dynamic. And you'll be moving from turbo dog into a low chaturanga and back. I've been enjoying these movements this week. So I'll show you first. So stage one of turbo dog is turbo puppy. Hands are in front of the shoulders and the elbows are bent. Doing unlocking the shoulders, which is shoulders back, shoulders down, lifting between the shoulder blades, bent elbows squeeze in, neck relax. So this is turbo puppy. Turbo dog is the same thing, but the knees are lifted. The dynamic one is on the inhale, shifting forwards, elbows are staying bent into a low chaturanga, face first into the couch, and then back. So you're staying in that wrapped position, but traveling there and back. The aim is when you go forwards, so chaturanga people, some of you are notorious when you do this, when you go to chaturangas, your shoulders are down here. I'm interested in elbows above wrists, Shoulders back, elbows wrapping, but not squeezing in. So you get that glide forwards and back. It is strong. All right, it is your turn. Come on to all fours. Leave a wee bit of space at the front. Take the hands forwards and then bend the elbows. So this elbow bend is the setup for Turbo Puppy, Turbo Dog, and this third stage. Exhale, draw your shoulder blades back, shoulder blades down. Inhale, lift up the section of spine between your shoulder blades, elbows still bent. Exhale, magnetize the elbows towards each other, upper arms squeezing inwards, neck is relaxing. So not dropped, but relaxed. So this is turbo puppy, chest is engaging, armpits are engaging, hands are active, good if you've got wrist stuff. Or tuck the toes so long as the elbows stay bent, this will be your turbo dog. If you're in turbo dog and you want to turbocharge your chaturanga, Inhale, shift forwards, elbows stay bent, elbows wrapping. So you're in that chaturanga. Exhale, press up and back. Harder than they look. Inhale forwards. Look forwards, whoever he is. Exhale, move up and back, couldn't resist. Inhale, shift forwards. Exhale, go back. Do two more of those. So remember, if it feels like it's really strong, it is something you can commit to building up to. It doesn't need to happen right now this very second. When you're finished with those two, set your knees down and then sit up. So we're moving into sun salutations, using these to move, warm up quite a bit. I'll be presenting some different shoulder options 
as well with how you're going to be moving. So wrap shoulder is fine, but with some of the things that we're going to be doing today, I'm interested in you gaining a different level of mobility in your shoulders. And that actually comes from an elevated scapula versus a depressed and wrapped shoulder blade, which is of limited use with some of the places we're going. So if you're thinking, I have no idea what he's talking about, it will make sense soon. Step to the front of your mat, have the feet about hip distance and parallel. One of the things to note if you're newer to this style of forest yoga and back bending, when you're doing things like cobra and low cobra, the hands are doing a pull towards the pelvis so you feel like there is a scooping forwards action happening in the chest. Even if the hands start here, it is still a pulling towards the hips. So an isometric engagement to help create this forward and up lift. Hands start to get out chest, head up. So especially if you're vigilant with a screen, if you can detach your eyes from it, that would be useful. Inhale, bring the arms up, lift chest, wrap shoulders forwards. Forward bend, exhale. Lunge, left leg back, knee down, arms up. Tuck your tailbone down and press into both feet. Plank, exhale, hands down, step back. Bend the elbows, elbows above the wrist as you lower. Low Cobra, prop up on your elbows. Do a quick moment of inhaling to lift the left leg. Exhale, rotate the left knee towards the right. Reach the leg back and put it down. You should feel like the left hip is sitting different. Inhale, lift the right leg. Exhale, rotate it to the left. Inhale, reach that leg back. Exhale, tuck your tailbone towards your heels. Squeeze the sit bone muscles. Inhale, pull with your arms so the elbows lift. So pulling to help lengthen the chest forwards. Downward facing dog. Exhale, hands under shoulders, lift knees. Lunge, inhale, lightly step your left luxurious loafer in between your hands. Inhale, bring the arms up, press down into both feet. Forward bend, exhale, hands down. Step forwards, neck relaxed. Inhale, scoop the chest forwards, come all the way up. Exhale, hands come together at chest. Inhale, reach up. Elbows are spinning forwards as you wrap the shoulders. Forward bend. Exhale. Lunge. Right leg steps back. Knee down. Arms up. Tuck tailbone down. Plank. Exhale. Hands down. Step back. Bend elbows. Low cobra. If it's helpful for you, do those leg adjustments. Inhale. Pull with the arms. Elbows lift. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Tuck toes. Lift knees. Lunge, inhale, right foot steps through between the hands, left knee down, inhale, bring the arms up. Focus on pushing down through your legs more. Forward bend, exhale, step forwards, neck is relaxed. Inhale, scoop chest forwards, come all the way up. Exhale, hands together, chest. Inhale, reach up, drive down through your feet. Forward bend, exhale, lunge, left leg back, knee down, arms up. Plank, exhale, active hands down. Step back, bend the elbows. Low cobra, inhale, pull with the arms, press the feet down, all toes, downward facing dog. Exhale, lunge, inhale, left foot steps through, right knee down, arms up. So the class won't be at this pace the whole time if you're struggling to stay on the screen. Forward bend, exhale. Inhale, lengthen chest forwards, come all the way up, push through your feet. Exhale, hands together, chest. Inhale, reach up, wrap shoulders forwards. Forward bend, exhale. Lunge, right leg back, knee down, arms up. Plank, exhale, hands down, step the feet back, bend elbows. Low cobra, inhale, pull with the arms, press feet down, tailbone tucks towards the heels. Downwards facing dog, exhale. Lunge, inhale, right foot steps through between the hands, left knee down, inhale, bring the arms up. Forward bend, exhale. Inhale, scoop chest forwards, drive through your feet to come up. Exhale, hands together at chest. Now, this time, clasp your hands, thumb and index finger are released. Inhale, bring your arms up. Take another deep breath here, bring your shoulder blades up towards your ears, keep them there. Squeeze the upper parts of your shoulder blades back and pull the hands towards the back of the mat. 
So you should feel massive trapezius engagement. Forward bend, exhale, lunge, left leg back, knee down. Inhale, bring your hands up, reclasp them. As you inhale, shoulder blades come up, back, pull the arms back. Plank, exhale, hands down, step back, bend elbows. Low cobra, inhale, pull with your arms, press down into your feet. Downward facing dog, exhale. Lunge, inhale, left foot steps through, right knee down, arms up. Interlace the fingers, shoulder blades up, squeeze the hands back. Forward bend, exhale. Inhale, scoop ribs forward, press through the feet as you come up. Exhale, hands together at chest. Inhale, reach up, clasp the hands, shoulder blades up, squeeze the arms back. Forward bend, exhale. Lunge, right leg back, knee down, arms up, come into that clasp. Shoulder blades are coming up, back, and pulling the arms back. Plank, exhale, step back, unfurl through your tailbone, so you're not tucking the tailbone yet as you lower. Low cobra, now begin the action of tuck tailbone, pull with your arms, downward dog. Exhale, hands under shoulders, lift knees. Lunge, inhale, right foot steps through, left knee down. Inhale, press through the feet, lift the arms up, clasp hands. Forward bend. Exhale, step forwards, neck relaxed. Inhale, scoop your chest forwards, come all the way up towards standing. Exhale, hands together at chest. Now, step your feet together. We're moving straight into B series with two pose vignettes. This means we'll do two poses on one side, something in the middle, and then two poses on the other side. It's like a delightful yoga Victoria sponge cake. Chair, inhale, bend legs. Forward bend. Exhale, halfway lift. Inhale, lengthen the rib cage towards the front of the mat. Plank, exhale, step or hop back, bend elbows and lower. Cobra, feel free to do low cobra. Instructions are very similar. Inhale, pull with the arms to scoop the chest forwards, tailbone tucks, lift the back of the skull. So if your head is hanging forwards, you're kind of working against that curvature of the spine. Lift the head. Downward dog. Exhale, tap toes. Archer, warrior two. Inhale, step the left foot forwards. Set the right foot parallel to the back of the mat and then come up so you're facing the left side of the room. Inhale, reach left arm up, right arm down. Exhale, draw the arms back. So just like you did earlier on. Inhale, press into active feet. Exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades back and then bend the arms aiming to move the hands towards each other. Maybe they find the clasp. If the clasp isn't available, take your right hand to hold the left elbow. Inhale, press into the feet and bend down into that left leg, chest up. Exhale, untuck the tailbone somewhat to help you feel some softness around the pelvis. So still active feet, still active legs, just not a massive compression as you do that tuck tailbone action. Inhale, lift the underarms up. Exhale, wrap right shoulder blade forwards. Hmm, left shoulder blade forwards, no longer mirroring you. Inhale, release the arms, moving into eagle arms. So left arm, so same one as front leg, over the top, mm, over the right arm. Either hold the shoulder heads, lifting the elbows, if you're tighter in the shoulders, or right hand holds the left thumb pad as you lift the elbows. Inhale, reach the thigh bones outwards, Exhale, press down to your left elbow, up through your right elbow. Each of these poses gives you a different way of moving your breath into your chest. So just like we did with the pranayama at the start, use this time and deep breathing to help focus on that, especially if it feels like everything else is kind of disappearing. Like, what am I even doing? Breathe into the upper back. Inhale, release the arms. Set the hands down either side of that left foot. Step the foot back. Exhale, bend elbows. Cobra. Inhale, ripple the chest forwards and up, including the head and that tailbone tucks down. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Archer, warrior two. Inhale, right foot steps through. Parallel the left foot to the back of the mat and then come up. So you're facing the left side of your mat. Inhale, reach right arm up, left arm down. 
Exhale, spin the palms towards the right side of your mat and then begin to reach the arms back. Inhale, lift chest. Exhale, move the hands towards each other, maybe finding the clasp or left hand holds right elbow. I don't treat this as an opportunity for a strap. Using your hands, I think, will give you more of a feel for this. Inhale, telescope ribs up. Exhale, wrap right shoulder blade forwards. Resolutely press down into your feet. Toe tips are lifting and spreading, so you get a feel for that level of activity in the lower leg versus the feet being down and not really doing anything. Like once you do active feet, you don't really go back. Inhale, release the arms, eagle arms. Exhale, right arm comes up and over the left, wrapping the arms to find hands or hold the shoulder heads. Inhale, reach the elbows away from your shoulders. Exhale, press down through the right shoulder, up through your left. Down through the elbows, rather. Use deep breathing to help unpick some of these tight areas in your upper back and shoulders. Inhale, release the arms, set the hands down, step the foot back, exhale, bend elbows, boat or half boat. Bring the hands back alongside you, palms face the ceiling. Now it's half boat because the legs aren't getting involved. Exhale, tuck tailbone towards your heels, press into the feet so the knees lift, so they're involved but they're not lifted. Inhale, stick the hands to the mat, pull with the back of your hands so you're lifting your chest. Look forwards but tuck the chin. Inhale, lift chest. Exhale, lift palms. So the palms are facing the ceiling and lifting and reaching back. Deep breath in. Exhale, turn the palms. See if that gives you a bit more scapula engagement as they squeeze towards each other. Deep breath in. Down dog. Hands under the elbows. Tuck toes. Lift knees up. Extended warrior. Inhale. Step the left foot through between the hands. Set the right foot up and come up into an abbreviated warrior two. So we're coming straight up onto that left leg. Bend the left leg so the knee is above the heel. Left forearm, instead of collapsing over it, press away from it so there's a repelling down happening. Inhale, bring the right arm up. Exhale, wrap the right palm towards the front of the room and bring the arm overhead so it's like a side bend. Inhale, lengthen the rib cage towards the front of the mat. Exhale, wrap right shoulder blade towards the underarm. Now relaxed neck here can either feel more neutral or turning your chin towards your left shoulder. Feel for, so let's pose it in other styles, it's called extended side angle. Your aim is to feel this extended side angle from your right hand all the way down to your heels. So if your arm is dropping in front of your face, take it up, wrap the shoulder blade and reach so you feel a sense of space around the right shoulder joint. As soon as the arm comes in front of the face, you feel compression in the joint because you're no longer really able to create that wrap and lift in the ribs. Now the second pose is complementing this one, flank stretch. Turn the left foot in, set the feet so they are parallel to one another. Take both hands over towards your left foot. Now this pose doesn't twist. Aim to have your collarbones facing through between your legs and move your chest over completely towards that left leg. Right hand holds outside the left ankle. Left fingertips are on the floor. So if it means higher up on your leg for you, then do that. Inhale, lean your right ribs to the right. Exhale, pull with your right arm, bending the elbow, moving the elbow towards the floor. Push with your left hand. So the aim is to feel kind of this section of right ribs moving to the right. So you create this big opening into the chest. Hold some tension in your abdomen and do thoracic breathing. Breathing in a way that moves your chest. If it feels sharp, that's almost the sensations I would expect here. <laughs> if that's any comfort, maybe not. Inhale, release your hands down, step your feet back. Inhale, unfurl through the chest, so you get that plank. Exhale, bend elbows. Low cobra palms up. Prop up on your elbows. Turn your palms to face up, but make sure your hands are on your yoga mat. 
If they're not, scuffle backwards a wee bit. Do those moves with the legs. I encourage you to get in the habit of doing those, especially if your low back is really frequently growly. Exhale, tuck tailbone towards heels, press then into your feet, knees lifted. Inhale, pull with your arms so the elbows lift. Aiming to roll the thumb tips towards the ground as you do a pulling action with the arms to draw your chest forwards. See if you can play with putting your ribs on the floor and without putting the elbows down, slide the upper arms down. So it looks like my elbows are on the floor, my forearms are, but the elbows aren't. Down dog, lower. I recommend you put your hands back the right way and then lift your knees up. Extended warrior. Inhale, right foot comes through. Set the right forearm onto your right thigh and then genuinely hang over that leg. Turn the left ribs up. Now, feel the difference when you push into your right forearm to create space. Draw the right sit bone towards the left, right knee above the heel. Inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, wrap left shoulder blade towards the underarm and lengthen. So I'm a big fan of repeating poses in my sequencing that continue to do the same thing. So side bends, big openers for the side ribs. So treat this with a little of the same sensations you had in seated side bend and see if there's a little bit more available to you now that you're warmer, now that we've done sun salutations, different shoulder engagements. Flight stretch. Exhale, turn the feet so they are parallel. Pardon me for the view. Move your chest over towards your right leg. Left hand grabs outside the left ankle. Right hand is outside the right foot and it can push. If you're not getting much purchase with that hand, you can always put the hand onto a block and press with that. Inhale, shear your ribs over to the left. Exhale, bend the left elbow down and press with the right palm. Breathe in a way that exaggerates the stretching and movement in the left side of your ribs. Now, relax neck doesn't mean straight down. Very slightly veer your head and neck to the right. Inhale, turn the foot forwards. Step back. Now, there's a wee bit of setup for this. If you are on a carpeted surface and your arms won't slide, or if you use like a blanket or something to make it slide and it still doesn't work, then do low cobra palms up, repeat that pose. If you're able to create a little bit of movement or you're on a like wooden surface or linoleum or something, then you're going to be folding your mat back so you've got slidey space and taking something, whether it's a blanket, towel, um, even a strap underneath your hands and set yourself up in a very, very low, low cobra that is completely on the ground. So my low cobra people who are not doing this blankety version, tuck your tailbone, pull with the arms, lift elbows. If you're doing a blankety one, it is dynamic. Inhale, pull with the arms so the elbows are up and drag the hands in as you lift chest. Exhale, re-tuck tailbone, slide back down. So it's like you're slithering back into your little cave Inhale, pull with the arms, dragging the chest up. Exhale, sliding back down. Inhale, pull with the arms, tailbone tucks. You might find that you get better stability by tucking the toes. Exhale, slide back down. Inhale, pull with the arms. So massive lat engagement as you do this pull down action. Exhale, slide back in. Last one. Inhale, pull with the arms, lift up through your skull so you've not got that additional dead weight hanging down. Exhale, slide back in. All right, downward facing dog. Hands under shoulders, lift knees up. Sort your mat back out if you folded it or unfolded it, rather. Okay, nice and tidy. Got to have a tidy workstation, folks. Lunge, heel to butt. Step your left foot forwards, put your right knee down. Square your hips forwards and know that if you are on the sciatic end of the spectrum, that back foot is usually angled in somewhat. Make sure it's going straight back. Exhale, reach the right arm back, bend the right leg and bring the heel in towards your butt. Inhale, lift chest. Exhale, tuck tailbone down as you ease the heel in. Inhale, scoop chest forwards and up, lift skull. 
Exhale, tuck tailbone down. Now you can stay here. This also might be where you're using the strap if holding the foot is challenging or hang your hips downwards. So maybe that heel to butt works better for you that way. Now bonus, if you don't need your left hand for balance, you're going to take it out to the side. So the elbow is lower than your shoulder, hand in line with your head and squeeze the arm back. So chest is facing forwards, left arm is working an abbreviated chest opener as you draw the right heel towards the butt. Inhale, lift ribs. Exhale, tuck tailbone down. So it begins to get quite spicy. Lunge back traction. Inhale, release the hands down. Lower your hips towards your front heel. Now, in this position, if your knee has gone in front of your heel, I want you to move yourself back so that your knee is above your heel. Pad the back knee. I'm on two yoga mats here, and that's still, I may need to change that. Bring the hands back onto your pelvis. Inhale, lift the ribcage up. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, draw shoulders back. Now, those of you trying to lift straight up, think about where your legs have put you. If you lean back a little bit, you're going to be in a little bit of an easier position to lean away from your left leg. Inhale, lift the entire ribcage up. Exhale, tuck tailbone down and squeeze inner thighs towards each other. Instead of making this pose a battle, what if you softened into the edges? Focus on breathing to move ribs and let yourself ease down without collapsing. Plank. Inhale, set your hands down, step your feet back. Now put the block or the roll between your ankle bones and then lower down. Take the hands so they're in line with your head but wider than your mat. Do that thigh roll in, so left knee rolls in, then right knee rolls in. Squeeze the block between your ankles. Inhale, pull with your arms, dragging your chest up. Exhale, tuck tailbone, squeeze block, lowering down, so cobra pull-ups. Inhale, pull with your arms, drag your chest forwards. Exhale, tuck tailbone more, squeeze block, lower the chest down. So your aim is that each time you lower, you're trying to go a bit further forwards and a bit further forwards. Inhale, pull with the arms. Exhale, tuck tailbone, squeeze the block, pull with the arms and lower down. Inhale, pull with the arms, drag your chest forwards. Exhale, lower. Down dog. Hands under shoulders, lift knees. Use your feet to move the block out of the way. Lunge heel to butt. Inhale, right foot comes through. Pull the left knee down. Square your hips off, padding the left knee as necessary, and then grab hold of that left foot. Inhale, square chest forwards. Exhale, tuck tailbone down. Now you can be here starting to lower into the legs or be exactly where you are. Right arm can come out to the side, working chest opener, squeezing the right shoulder blade back and carrying the arm bones back. So this creates a wee bit of an opening to that right side of chest. Inhale, lift ribs, lift skull. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, maybe starting to lower into the legs a little bit. Switch deep breathing on. So I really like this little chest opener um, accessory. If it feels like it's too much, we bring a hand down onto the leg. We have plenty other poses that we can use to get into these places. It doesn't need to be all or nothing right now. Lunge back traction. Set the left leg down, lower into your lunge and then do any little moves that allow you to get the heel directly underneath your knee. Switch the inner thighs on, recalling the work that we did, working with the roll and the block at the inner thighs. For this one, inhale, bring your arms up, lift the ribcage up and lean back a little bit. Exhale, bring the hands onto your lower back and sacrum and pull down on those bones. Inhale, move the breastbone forwards and up. Exhale, shoulder blades back, shoulder blades down. I'm letting my chin tuck. You can lean the head back so it feels like it's in line with everything else. I find sometimes it's a wee bit much on my shoulders here. Now pause, inhale, lift your shoulder blades up, squeeze them back, squeeze the elbows back. Reach the upper arm bones down. Inhale, lift, all right, now that theme is gonna be there. Step that foot back. Before we move down to do this, you're gonna do this manually here. Clasp the hands. If you can't kneel, then do standing on the knees. Slide your thumbs up towards your mid to low back. Inhale, lift shoulder blades up. Squeeze them back. Squeeze the elbows towards each other. 
Exhale, extend your triceps. So the arms aren't fully straightening. So if you've locked them and it feels like they've splayed, that is not a strong position. Work with the arms working away so your thumbs aren't on your back. All right, now come down. Come down onto your abdomen. These are hard work. Put your forehead down. Clasp the hands and then slide your thumbs up towards your lower back. Inhale, lift your shoulder blades up towards your ears. Squeeze them towards each other. Squeeze the elbows towards each other. Exhale, work your arms straight there. Inhale, lift chest, maybe lifting legs. So endeavoring that this tricep engagement, the shoulder blade engagement, trapezius engagement, means your thumbs are in your butt. Take another deep breath. Exhale, lower. Whew. Hands under your shoulders, downward facing dog. Exhale. Archer, warrior. Inhale, step the left foot forward. This time it's a warrior one. Do not set the back heel down. Instead, bend your right leg and come up. So looking for almost a 90 degree bend in that front leg. Square the hips forward, thinking that front right side of pelvis coming towards the front of the mat and tuck tailbone down so you feel like the sit bones are going straight down. You're not sticking your butt out. You're not in this kind of like warrior one position that I see a lot. I'm looking for this neutral pelvis. Inhale, reach right arm up, left arm down. Exhale, sweep the arms back, but begin to straighten your right leg. Deep breath in. Exhale, either work actively with the arms or work on clasping the hands for archer specifically. Inhale, lift chest. Exhale, reach the right elbow up. Maybe you're alternating by holding on to your right elbow with your left hand. Inhale, lift ribs. Exhale, wrap right shoulder blade forwards. Can you lift right side ribs up in particular? So not so much a side bend, but more of an active lifting of that lateral side. Easy twisting warrior. Inhale, release the right hand down about 30 centimeters away from your left foot. Drive up through your right thigh, leveling the pelvis, and then stick your butt out. Inhale, scoop chest forwards. Exhale, turn your chest using your back muscles. So rather than allowing your pelvis to drop and your arm to squeeze over, level the hips, bring yourself out of any weird shoulder place and rotate like we did in cross-legged spinal twists at the start. Oh hey, it's like there's a theme. Actively reach away with the hands. So you feel powerful here. Take another deep breath. Exhale, release that left hand down. Step the legs back. Put the block or the roll to the inner upper thighs. So slightly different bite point this time. Hands go wide. Exhale, tuck your tailbone towards the roll or the block and squeeze the roll or the block. Inhale, pull with the arms. Scoop the ribcage forwards. Exhale, tuck tailbone more. Pull more and drag the chest forwards and down. Inhale, pull with the arms. It's like a worm-like movement going forwards. Exhale, pull more to lower down. Back sensitive, take the hands further forwards. Inhale, pull with the arms, lengthening the chest forwards. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, squeeze roll, lower the chest down. Two more. Downward facing dog. Exhale, tuck toes, lift knees, remove the props from there. Archer warrior one. Inhale, step the right foot through, bend your left knee, and then come up. So you're pushing off of that right foot to get yourself evenly distributed weight-wise between front leg and back leg. Square the hips forwards, tuck tailbone down. Inhale, reach left arm up, right arm down. Exhale, sweep the arms back, head lifted. Now you can be here or navigating towards archer or right hand holds left elbow. Once you find your spot, gradually work on straightening the left leg so we're getting into some of those areas that we were working in our lunges and lunge heel to butts. Inhale, lift chest. Exhale, tuck tailbone down. Do an action of squeezing that front heel towards the back of the mat, feet active. So you're getting some hamstring engagement but I find it also helps me decompress the lower back rather than the sort of spilling into the pelvis. Easy 
Easy twisting warrior. Inhale, release the arms. Allow your chest to come down. So if you've left your butt low, I actually would prefer you can lift your butt up a wee bit here. Draw the right sit bone down, left thigh bone up, and then stick your butt out. Exhale, turn your chest to the right. Right arm is in line with the chest. Turn so you're using your back muscles rather than just arbitrarily moving the arm to make it look like you went further. Inhale, lengthen left ribs towards your right knee. Exhale, rotate. So you're using those back muscles, so active twisting. Press down into both feet so you get that lifting up sensation. Toes tucked up dog. Inhale, set your hands down. Set the feet back, toes are tucked. Inhale, shift forwards. Exhale, drive through your heels, lower your hips. And instead of collapsing the shoulders, press down so you have this lifting action. Inhale, pull with your arms to invite the breastbone forward. You're not trying to pull your pelvis through your hands. Legs are keeping you pulled back. Down dog. Exhale, tuck toes, lift hips up. Lunge with bird wing to bird wing Finley extensions. Step your left leg forwards, lower your hips towards that front heel, and then come up. Bring the elbows into your low front ribs. So I teach these a little bit differently. Your elbows are not completely under the shoulders. They're a little bit in front and squeezed against your ribs, both inwards, so in towards the ribs, and also back towards the ribs. So that when you rotate, you're getting this clear muscular control happening in the teres muscles. Then once you've found that, the arm stays at that angle and reaches outwards on the inhale. It's going to feel immensely heavy. All right, bring both arms in. Have them slightly in front of your ribs. Slide the elbows down, lift your head up, press into your feet, deep breath in. Exhale, squeeze the arms against your ribs, rotate the hands out. Inhale, reach the arms out in that plane, feeling that amount of rotation that you've already worked. Exhale, relax the arms, bring them in, deep breath in. Exhale, rotate out. Inhale, reach the arms out in that plane, working with that rotation. Exhale, relax the arms, bring them back, deep breath in. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, reach the arms out. Exhale, bring the hands down. Working pigeon back bend, heel to butt. Bring the left leg into pigeon, but I don't recommend a 90 degree angle. Knee sensitive, put something underneath your pelvis. So this might help give you a sensation of not coming so far into that left knee. Use fingertips on the floor, pull with them to help create that back bend articulation. Tailbone tucks down. So this is a very good working stage one. If you're interested in working a little bit further, take the left hand down and reach the right hand back, coming into more of a heel to butt. As your mobility dictates, if you're not using any props, you might find that that heel to butt back bend lifts up a little bit taller, or you can work the rotation. So fingers go from the inside of the foot, rotating around, and then starting to lift up. So it is shoulders going upright rather than slightly forwards. So see what feels appropriate. Whichever one you're doing, switch it on a bit more by tucking your tailbone down. Inhale, release that right foot, set your hands down, step straight back into downward facing dog. Lunge with bird wing. Inhale, right foot forwards, left knee down. Square the hips and then come up. Okay. Bring the elbows in, palms facing up. Slide the elbows down and then fix the elbows in and back against your ribs. Deep breath in. Exhale, rotate the arms out. Inhale, reach the arms out on that angle. Exhale, bring the arms out. So it should feel active rather than just like limp waves and wafts. Deep breath in. Exhale, rotate the arms out. Inhale, reach the arms out away from one another, like you're lifting the heavens. So atlas yourself. Forearms in, palms face up, deep breath in. Exhale, rotate. Inhale, reach the arms out. Exhale, release the arms. Pigeon back bend. Reset your right shin. So if your head is at 12 o'clock, the shin bone is at about an eight o'clock position. 
Tucking the left toes can help you work that left knee to point downwards rather than off to the side. Maybe you're supporting underneath the pelvis to take some of the pressure off the knee, obviously working different angles. The further up you go, the more weight there's going to be going down into your hips. If your hands are forwards, there's weight going into there. Obviously that also dictates the height of the back bend, or the depth of the back bend. Perhaps you're starting to work onto the fingertips, but pulling with them to help bring the chest forwards. If you wish to, you're working into heel to butt, bending that back leg, reaching back, maybe working the option of palm to the inside of the foot, grabbing, spinning the elbow up, and then turning the chest forwards. That one is deceptive in its challenge, so it's quite tough. Inhale, draw left ribs forwards. Exhale, tuck tailbone down. Inhale to release that left leg. Set the hands down, go to downward dog. It's going to be a very brief time in downward facing dog. Inhale, set your knees down. Okay, in this next piece, I want you to play with a couple of things. So first thing I want you to do is take your elbows wide, so palms are facing forwards, elbows wide. Wrap your elbows towards your shoulders and now keep that, but try to take your arms back and straighten them back the way. How's it going for you? Going good? Probably not. All right, now take the elbows out to the side. Inhale, lift your shoulder blades up. Squeeze them back. Take your arms back and start to straighten your arms back. Less impeded. Hopefully felt different, less blocked. So if I'm moving my shoulder blade to here and I've done this depression and then sliding it around towards like a protracted place and I try to lift my arm, it's always going to be a bit blocked. This is useful for stability, but if you're looking for the mobility required for wheel, then actually you can need to work in a different place, which is use your rhomboids, use your trapezius, and then press from that place. I'm going to show you wheel with the two different setups, and then when we get to it, you can play with which one feels appropriate. I'm a big fan at the minute of the other one, and I'll show you the difference. So for now, just watch for a sec. So you'll be starting in bridge regardless, so about five breaths in bridge. Some of you will move into wheel. Now, traditionally in wheel, teachers would pry the elbows towards each other, so it's a big old squeeze in, and then pressing into the hands, all right? So I'm in a wrapped position and I can feel it. If, however, I take the elbows wide, bring the shoulder blades up, squeeze them back and engage the trapezius and press, I get a very different action happening in the shoulders and it feels like I'm able to move into the regions of the back, kind of from here to here, rather than pretty much all of it happening from here to here. So it's an interesting experience. It's a bit odd, because obviously your elbows are wide. You're then trying to bring your shoulder blades up, but it's technically down and then back, which is behind you, so that's still fine. So an interesting one to play with. If you, oh no, we'll do it this way. So starting in bridge, you're gonna do five breaths in bridge, then a little bit of time in wheel prep. Now some of you will stay in wheel prep, and I'll talk you through that, or some of you will do wheel but the time there is not hugely long. All right, set the feet, hip distance apart, palms face up. You have the option of putting a roll to your inner thighs if you want to be on really good behavior there. Inhale deeply. Inhale, mm, exhale, press into active feet, lift pelvis up. And give yourself some time here. It's been a wee while since you've been in this pose. Inhale, feel for the breastbone moving towards the back of the mat. Exhale, drive into your heels, inner thighs are squeezing towards each other. Already take the arms overhead so you're getting them ready. Righty. Point the fingers towards your shoulders. Now instead of fighting your elbows in, I'm going to almost think of your elbows going a bit wide here. Now this is where we might kind of meet the match, so you might be able to press to lift onto the crown of your head. If that feels like it is too much for you to say, and come back to bridge, be in bridge, and consider working with one leg up, and then one leg up for five breaths, and then the other leg up. If you've made it to your hands, take your elbows a bit wider, inhale to bring your shoulder blades up towards your ears, and squeeze the shoulder blades back, 
and then see if you can press off your hands from there. So you feel the shoulder blade and the rhomboid engagement. If you were doing wrapped shoulder, it's a very different dealie. You also might need to move your hands back to play with these options. So get a feel for what feels appropriate. Like bridge one leg up people, arms are relaxed down by your sides and you're powering up through your legs as you drive down through the opposite heel. So um, reminiscent of the way that your legs are working in Warrior. Wheel people, bring yourself down. Stand up, you need a strap for this or a towel or some item that can get you a hold of the back legs. If you're in a pinch, whip your leggings off and then use like the crotch of the leggings around the foot. Been there, done that. So you're gonna take the strap around your right ankle. So it's behind you. Bring the strap or the leggings up over your shoulders. Take a hold near the nape of your neck and bring the elbows in. All right, inhale, flex your right foot, push the foot back. Inhale, bring the arms up. Now this is a familiar position. Inhale, bring your shoulder blades up, squeeze the upper shoulder blades back as you begin to kick through the leg a bit more. So you're not leaning forwards, so that kind of ponche isn't quite what we're looking for. So instead it is shoulder blades up, shoulder blades squeezing towards each other and sending the fists up. So if you're wondering how do you develop the flexibility and strength for wheel, dancer with a strap. If you look at the positioning, it's essentially wheel, one leg up, just turn the other way around. Inhale, relax that, change to the other side. So meant to say, there is a tuck tailbone down action happening. If it's huge, you won't get much movement, but there's just enough that you've got some support to not compress the back. This can also be done with the strapped leg against a wall if you feel like it is very wobbly. So you can lean left hip, left shoulder against the wall. Hold near the nape of the neck, left foot is flexing. Lift the head. Inhale, press into that left foot. So that is what creates a lot of that power. Inhale, lift your shoulder blades up, squeeze them back, and then start to straighten the arms as you press into that foot. Hips are leveling off. Inhale, shoulder blades up. Exhale, squeeze the arms back. So you might be able to straighten the arms. If they straighten easily, then go a little further down the strap. But avoid wrapping your shoulders here. All right, soften that. Come down onto your abdomen. So you're moving into cobra pull-ups. Put the block between your ankles on a wide setting. So these are going to be much smaller. So using back bends to unwind back bends. Take the hands so they're in front of the line of your head. Elbows are more in line with the shoulders, hands wider than your mat. Turn the knees in towards each other. So especially when I see people doing standing back bends, there's usually a lot of turned out feet. So turn the knees inwards to help remedy some of that. Exhale, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, squeeze block. Inhale, pull with your arms so your chest lifts. Exhale, pull more, lower the chest out. So smaller back bends with the aim of unwinding. Inhale, pull with the arms. Exhale, lower. Inhale, pull with the arms, scooping your chest forwards. Exhale, lower. Inhale, pull. Exhale, lower. All right, now this next side bend, I've been enjoying this this week. If you follow me online, you'll see this pose. And tell me I'm thinking of you with this. Set your block up to low or medium at the back of your mat. You can use a roll for this. You're gonna put your left ankle on there, lining up your left heel, left hip and left hand. Left hand wants to be about six inches ahead of the plumb line of the shoulder, so from directly under, a little bit in front, and then right leg is coming over the top. So if you've seen Titanic, this is like very reminiscent of that. I feel like I'm being painted tastefully, I hope. Now one of the things I quite like to do here, right hand is put the palm onto the sacrum and press this right hip 
over the left thigh a little bit. So just creating a little bit of a sacral rock, so a wee bit of a shimmy. Now this pose is created by the tension between the high points, but also by doing deep breathing. An additional action is to squeeze the left thigh muscles upwards or squeeze left sit bone muscles. Let's see what that does. There's a big old side bend. The longer we're here, the more you will feel. All right, bend the elbow, switch sides. So you can either roll over or you can turn it right around. So right heel, right hip, right hand in one line. Left leg is over the top. Allow the right shoulder to slide up. Left palm can guide the sacrum or even do a little bit of back traction work. Or you can use like there's this um, sort of bony nub at the pinky edge of your wrist. You can kind of get into some places like that. So maybe your butt muscles. So long as you're still doing deep breathing, then I'll be happy with that. For extra engagement, think about squeezing the inside of the right thigh up, squeezing right sit bone muscles upwards also. All right, come up from there. It is Shavasana time, final relaxation pose. If you've got your yoga mat, I'm assuming you're on a yoga mat, you could roll it up and set it just at the bottom of your shoulder blades to create a little bit of a passive chest opener so this will get in around your low ribs. Alternatively, you could turn it and set it to the bottom of your ribs and into the head and draw the shoulder blades down so a smaller chest opener. Or if you have your roll and your block, then you can set up for chest opener, which is roll between the shoulder blades and block behind your head. You can also simply lay down in any other comfortable rest position for yourself. And at the end of Shavasana, I'll bring you up, so don't worry about like switching off or anything like that. I will bring you up at the end.
gradually begin to deepen your breath. Allow this gradual expansion of breath to move into your back ribs, side ribs, and front ribs. And allow your breath to wash through this entire area. Start to move your fingers and your toes, and then bend your legs, setting your feet to the floor. Roll to your left, and then use your arms to make yourself up towards seated where you are. Choose a comfortable seat that allows you to be without struggle around your shoulders and chest. Set the weight back so you feel more anchored towards your sit bones, hips working a little less, and then lift the skull. Close your eyes and let your breathing be easy. It's still intentional, but easy. Acknowledge the time you've taken for your practice today. And in this time of disconnection, know that through breath and movement, you've connected with many others. Moving at the same time in unison. There's something quite comforting about that. Bring your hands together at chest. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bow forwards. Namaste.